Nipsey like, uh-uh, I want you here and now, right now, drop. I'm like, yo, yo, chill, chill. She said, uh-uh, I need, I want you now. I said, wait, 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 wait. I said, so you just gonna take it? So she like, yeah, come on. I said, listen, I, I need some time to warm up to this. Y'all gotta remember, man, this woman got me pushing her late 60s, early 70s, right? I just felt like my skin was crawling at this point in time. So she like, yeah, come on, come on, let's go. So she trying to undress me and I'm like, yo, chill, chill. So I grabbed her by her shoulders I'm like, and I like, like grab her strong. And I'm like, yo, just chill out, wait a minute. So she's like, oh, I like that. So she trying to like kiss me, like come in and kiss me. I'm like, so I'm bobbing and weaving like this, right? So she's like, oh yeah, I like that. I like you like to fight. So I'm like, right. I, 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 I say, listen, I need, I need some time, man. I'm, she like, I'm not trying to hear that. So she was like, I'm gonna be back. I will be back. So she leave out the cell and I'm like, oh, right now, I'm like, what did I get myself into? Maybe I should have dropped the kite. Maybe I should have checked in. Maybe, maybe I should have. So I'm sitting at the bottom bunk and I'm thinking to myself like, I am not about to let this woman touch me again. It's not gonna happen. I know dudes out there be like, man, you crazy, man. I would have broke that down right there in the cell, right then and there. I don't care how old she is. Let me tell y'all something. I got morals and I got standards. And them standards right there is way below my minimum. That ain't happening. That's out. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking like, ugh, ugh, how I'm going to get out of this? Because not only she looked like a sweet old lady, but she was aggressive with it. I'm talking about she grabbed me. She was aggressive with it. So I'm thinking like, okay, maybe if I, maybe if I just break her off this one time and just make it real bad, maybe I should maybe I should just jackhammer it and just be real lousy with it. Then I got to thinking about she giving out STDs. I'm not touching that, man. I'm, I'm just going to have to go through the hole. Some, I'm just going to have to tell something. But then again, I'm thinking like, you know, I don't want to blow. I don't know who this woman connected with. You know, I don't know what's going to happen to me back there in the hole. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to have to man up and do what I got to do. But I'm not going into this woman without no protection. That ain't happening. That's out. I came to prison STD free. I'm leaving out STD free. And that's the bottom line to it. In the last video, I forgot to tell y'all to hit that like button. So I'm sitting there and I'm contemplating what am I gonna do? How I'm gonna get out of this? Dante, use your thinking. Use your head, use your head. How you gonna get out of here? So I just lay back on my bed and I'm like, Maybe I should just put somebody on her. Okay, well, no, nah, I can't do that because I can't trust nobody in here. So now I'm thinking like, well, maybe I could just, you know, break her break her off, but do it all sloppy and do it all nasty that she'll be like, ugh, I don't want to mess with him no more, something like that. So all these things is going in my head at this particular time. So I'm like, okay, all right. So then... I walk out the cell and she got the control booth and she eyeing me like an evil stalking a mouse. Here she go. I feel her eyes on my back. Ooh, goosebumps. The hairs on my skin got the raising up. Y'all see that? That's just that right there let y'all know that this really happened. Y'all, y'all see my goosebumps? Y'all see the hair on my right there that's lifting up? Oh, I felt that woman eyes breathing on my back. So I'm walking and I'm like, ugh. So I'm walking, I go sit down and I'm watching TV. So I feel a presence approaching me and she's standing there. She's like, do you need anything? I said, no, I don't need nothing. She was like, well, I'm gonna be by your cell around 2 a.m. I said, all right. She was like, okay, I'll see you then. So she got to walking off. And then I, I thought to myself, like, you know what? If this gotta happen, it gotta happen the right way. So I got up and I, I walked up on her. I said, hey, do me a favor, bring some condoms. She looked at me, she was like, what, you don't trust me? I said, listen, man, I heard what happened to my Sally, and you know, I just don't, I, I just wanna I just wanna be protected, that's all. She was like, hmm, okay, what you, what, 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 
Magnum. I said, how you know? <laughs> so she walk off and she go to the control booth and I go back and go sit down. Sit down and I get to watch the TV. And I hear the control booth door close. And so I look over there and I see her walking towards my way again. So she get up on me and she put her hand like right here, like on my right here. And she like massaging, massaging it a little bit. I said, she like, she like, you like that? I said, yeah, yeah, that's cool. And then she stopped and she was like, yeah, you gonna get me in trouble up in here. I said, no, you gonna get yourself in trouble. Now, it might look like I was flirting back with her, but y'all, I was in a bad spot. I was in, I was stuck in between a hard place and a hard place, okay? So I'm like, all right, whatever. So she like, yeah, you got a whole lot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my time with you. So I'm like, I said, yeah, what we gonna do? She like, yo, you gonna find out. I'm not, I got a lot of wisdom and I got a lot of skills, baby. She just walked off and I'm like, ugh. So now I'm like, man, this is real. I said, you know what? I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out, I gotta get out of the situation. And now I'm thinking to myself, like, maybe I should start an argument with somebody so I can get put in a hole. What about that argument might lead to a fight? What about that fight might lead into a stabbing? What about that stabbing might lead into a death? Then I'm thinking like all over because I didn't want to break down Officer Sarah. I'm just going to have to break her down. So now it's time for us to lock down. You know, I can't even sleep. I can't sleep at all, man. I can't sleep at all. I'm trying to get some rest, but that's all I'm thinking about. This woman putting her nasty body against mine. So I'm laying there. I'm like, man, it's really going to happen. Man. Ugh. About 2.30 rolls around, and I hear her walking down in tear. You know, she doing her rounds. She walked right past my cell. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, man, it's just a matter of time. Ugh. So, so true to her word, she ended up coming back about six minutes later. She come up in the cell act like I'm asleep. So I'm wrapped up in my cover and I'm holding it tight. Like from here to here, I'm rolled up tight like a fruit roll up. So she come in there and she like, Dante, Dante. And I'm and I'm acting like I'm asleep hard. She like, Dante. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. She's like, Dante. So I hear her and she was like, you ain't sleep. So she got to shaking me. So she was like, oh, okay, you want to play a game. I, I only got time. So then she's like trying to pull it, like pull it, cover off of me. Matter of fact, I'm gonna show y'all, hold up. So I'm wrapped up like this, acting like I'm asleep. She grabbing the cover like this, like just trying to get aggressive, trying to take it off. But I'm holding on to this cover for dear life, right? So she's like, man, stop playing, stop playing. We Come on, let's, let, let's do this, let's do this. She's like, yeah, let's do this, let's do this. So I'm like, man, no, man, no, stop, stop. She like, she like, what you mean, no? I said, I said, you got the condoms. She like, oh, she like, oh, oh, no, I forgot. I get them next time. I said, no, no, we can't do that. She like, no, come on, let's do it. I said, no, man, I, I know, I'm not, I can't do it. No, you gotta go get them. She's like, I can't go get them. They're in the car. I'm like, well, I, we, we can't do nothing then. It can't happen. She like, all right, all right, whatever. All right, I'll be back. I'll be back. She like, yeah, you better be ready tomorrow. So she left off the cell. So I'm thinking like, yes, victory. I won this battle. I won this time. So later on that evening, I comes back from the yard and she's standing in front of my cell with another guard. So I'm like, hmm, what the heck going on? So I walk up there. I'm like, what's going on? They're like, this your cell, right? I said, yeah. So I'm looking at cell like, what the heck going on? So she like, stand out here. We finna shake your cell down. I'm like, what? So they go in there and they shaking it down. I'm like, man, what is y'all looking for? They're like, well, we heard that you was doing tattoos up here. I'm like, tattoos? Man, I don't tattoo nobody. So I don't know how to do no tattoos. They going under my bed, flipping my mattress, going through all my personal belongings, everything. They going through my tote, they going through my locker, all of that. They basically mess my cell up. And I see her too, and she, and she been extra too. So I'm like, man, what the heck is this all about? I'm like, all right, whatever. So they was like, well, go in there, clean it back up. And they walked off. So I, so I go in the cell and I'm like, man, what the heck going on? So about 30 minutes later, she come to my cell. And I'm like, yo, what's up? What's going on? You couldn't give me the heads up? Like somebody 
talking about I'm tattooing? She was like, that's just a warning. Did not be tonight and it's gonna get worse. And she walked out. So I'm like, this B, she the one set this up because I wouldn't give it to her. She did this, she set this up. Remember I told y'all, this is they house. They do what they want to do up in here. She had the power to get me shook down because I wouldn't give her the you know what. So I'm thinking like, okay, now this just turned real serious. Right before lockdown, she come up to me and she like, I got them. So she showed me the, the gold package. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool, cool bet. So she was like, you better be ready too. And don't be playing no games tonight. So I went in the cell and I'm thinking like, what can I do to get out of this? I already know this chick crazy. So what can I do to get out of this and not get in trouble? So I'm like, I don't know what the heck I'm gonna do. What am I gonna do to get out of this? So I lay down and I get ready for this unholy consummation. So she come in there around three o'clock and she like, okay, come on, let's do it, let's do it. So then I'm like, all right, hold on, hold on. So she like, yeah, come on. So she laid me down on my back and she kissed me on the cheek and I just lost it. I just melted like, oh my goodness, ugh. So she was like, all right, come on. So she gets, so she take the condom off, she opened the package up. And I'm like, all right, just hold on, give me a minute. So then I get up and I go to the toilet. So she like, hurry up, hurry up. So I, so I open it and I'm fumbling with the wrapper and I go, oops. And it kind of fall in the toilet. She's like, what happened, what happened? I said, oh man, I dropped it, I dropped the condom. She was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, why did you do that? Why did you do that? I said, no, I just dropped it, you know, it's dark up here. And she was like, keep your, keep your voice down, keep your voice down. And then I was talking, so then I was like, uh-huh, <coughs> uh-huh. <coughs> Like cough loud, and she was like, "What are you doing?" I said, "I said, man, I got a bad cough, so I got to cough it loud." Like, <coughs> <coughs> she was like, "You making too much noise?" So she leave out the cell. You know, thank God. I said, "Okay, good. I done dodged this bullet." But she came right back in there with another kind of. She was like, "All right, I'm not playing with you. Come on, here, let, let's do it." Matter of fact, I'm gonna put it on you. I'm gonna tell y'all something. A man can be violated by a woman. A lot of you guys out there might be like, oh man, I would have broke that down. A lot of you cats out there ain't got no principles, no morals. A lot of y'all standards are substandard. I couldn't do it. So she's like, no, I'm gonna put it on for you. I'm gonna put it on for you. And I'm like, ugh. So then I'm like, you know what? So as she, so she, so she grabbing at my pants, and I'm holding my pants like dear life. She said, she like, man, stop. What are you doing? Come on. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. She like, so you really going, you really going to do this? I'm like, man, I'm straight. So she like, all right. Okay. So, okay. You want to be like that? All right. So she walk out the cell. So at this point in time, I'm thinking to myself, like, you know what? I don't even care no more. I don't care. Whatever's going to happen, it's going to happen. So it's count time. And I get up to open my cell door to go out for count. And my door won't open. And I'm like, yo, what's going on? They say, you're on lockdown. I said, for what? I got up for count. This woman, it, it had come to me later on in the day that this woman wrote me up for being vulgar, talking to her vulgar. I ended up getting a ticket, right? But she said she didn't want to press charges against me for talking to her vulgar. So they gave me a warning. I had to be in my room for two days, like a child. That was her retaliation against me. So on the third day, I finally get out and she walk up to me with a big smile on her face. And she like, how's my poor baby? And I'm like, I said, you dead wrong, man. She was like, what, what did I do? I said, you you, you treacherous, why did you do that? She was like, what, what did I do? You know I can make your life way worse than it is, right, inmate? I end up going to breakfast. I got my tray, walking down the line with the frozen apples on there. They put the two hard boiled eggs on my tray. Burnt, toe up Texas toast on there. And I grabbed me a milk. As I turn to my left to exit out the line, boom! Guess who's standing there? CEO Sarah. Boom! My tray get tipped. Everything flies this way. And she say, watch your step, inmate. 
So dude's looking at me like, what the heck going on over there? Sarah will go on to pick and mess with me for the next four days. I go to the shower and she'll cut the water off. Or I'll be in the shower and she'll cut the hot water off and it'll be just cold water. Or I will have random shakedowns in my cell. Like I said, this will go on for about four days. Saturday rolls around. Remember I told y'all she, she does not work on the weekend. At this point in time, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna end up doing something to this woman and end up never getting out of here. Yeah, I could have gave her what she wanted, but ugh. So I said, you know what? I gotta go to the hole. So I went to my room, I packed all my stuff up and I went to the control booth, knocked on the glass. The sergeant that was in there was like, what's going on? I said, I need to talk to you for a minute. He like, all right, what's going on? I said, I fear for my life. I feel like somebody in here trying to kill me. Who is trying to kill you? I said, I don't want to give no names, but I just I just fear for my life and I need to get out of here. At this point in time, if you tell a guard that you fear for your life and they don't get you out of there and something happened to you, big loss. So he like, all right, all right, cool. So he said, go get your stuff. I already, I already had my stuff. I went upstairs, grabbed my stuff, came in the office. Dudes look like, what the heck going on? Checking in, why? The D checking in, what the heck going on? The moral of this story is this. In prison, you only have so much control of what you can do and what you can't do. You only have so much control of your life and decisions that you make. DCOs, they can make your life a living hell up in there. They control your movement. They control what you eat. They control the temperature of the water in the shower that's getting put on your body. Sarah will go on to find her a new boy toy. And well, was busting that thing wide open. Ugh, good. I'm free. I end up doing a month in the hole till they put me in a new block. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button. This is the Dante Show, Lockdown 88. I'm out.